in my recent video that I did going over Zach the Celtic's guy's latest ramblings, uh, at one point he went over, he clicked on one of the tabs there and it shows uh, this article here that I really want to read from this place called The Gray Zone. Now, I don't know much about the Gray Zone there. It's some fucking news site that Zach the Celtics guy really loves. So, um, uh, something tells me there's a whole lot of pro-Russian propaganda in this thing. But, uh, the reason why I wanted to go over this article today is because, well, Coach Red Pill's dad is still alive. And not only that, he has decided to give his hot takes on his son fucking around and finding out in Ukraine here. So I figured since it's been over one month since Coach Red Pill got arrested, and since uh, it truly does blow my mind that Coach Red Pill's actual father is still alive, uh, that he's decided to give his hot takes on what happened with his son, that I figure, okay, let's let's read this fucking article. Let's Let's have a little read. At this fucking article. So here we go. This is from the gray zone. If you want to read it at your own pace. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But anyway. So. <clears throat> Father of Gonzalo Lira. American jailed in Ukraine. Speaks out against. Quote unquote. Political imprisonment. And this article was written. On June, well, this article was published on June 1st, 2023, and it was written by Alex Rubenstein. Oi, fucking they. Anyways, let's get into this. <coughs> U.S. citizen Gonzalo Lira faces a long prison term in Ukraine for criticizing the country's government. Shunned by the U.S. government, his father is fighting to stop the quote-unquote slow death of a son. I mean... Ukraine is currently fighting for its very survival right now against Russia's invasion. Of, of fucking Ukraine here. And here's Gonzalo Lira. You know, openly proclaiming how he's, how he's so, how he's so proud to be the, how he's so proud to be pro-Putin. How he fucking loves Russia. How he fucking hates the West and how he hates Zelensky and the Ukrainian government. Even though he's been living in Ukraine for several years. There, as this article will state... Even though he's been living in this country for seven years, he is begging for its downfall. He is begging for its collapse. He is begging for its outright destruction at the hands of Russia. And they did enact a law stating that, you know, you're not allowed to say this shit. You know, you're not allowed to criticize the government because, well, these people are literally being invaded. And being massacred on the daily there. And you know, this isn't the first time such a law had to be enacted. They literally did this shit during the Civil War. You'll, uh, you'll often hear this argument. You'll often hear this little talking point brought up by uh, a lot of neo-Confederates there. But, uh, yeah, old Coachy boy, he fucked around and found out, and now he's, uh, he's gonna go to pound me in the ass jail for quite some time, anyway. When U.S. media have demonstrated any interest in the arrest of an American citizen, Gonzalo Lira, it has been to primarily celebrate his prosecution on the grounds that he has been, quote-unquote, shilling for Putin. Which he has. The U.S. State Department, meanwhile, refuses to answer questions about the disappearance of an American at the hands of a government sub 
substantially funded by Washington. Well, Coach has been living in the country for seven years, as this article is going to state. So, for all intents and purposes, Coach Red Pill is a citizen of Ukraine, as he has been living in the country for seven years. I'm sure Coach Red Pill wasted no time renouncing his American citizenship and openly proclaims to be a Ukrainian. At least until, uh, at least until, uh, old Putin decided that, uh, Maybe he wanted a, a bigger slice of the Ukrainian cake there. You know, the little piece he already had, Crimea, was nice. But may, maybe he maybe he uh, should get the entire fucking cake all to himself there before that happened. So, uh, yeah, not surprising that the United States uh, State Department is not talking about Coach Red Pill when... Uh, Coach Red Pill is no longer an American citizen, so that's the Ukrainians' problem to deal with. And I'm sure they're loving every minute of having to take care of them there. But anyway, continuing. The gray, st the, the gray Zone spoke to Lyra's father, 80 years old, Gonzalo Lyra Sr. I have no idea how they found this guy. I didn't even know his father was still alive until today. Okay, until I did that fucking video on, uh, Zed the Celtic's guy earlier, so anyways. About his son's arrest. I can only say that this episode has marked my life because it is living a slow death of a son, Lyra Sr. said. He fretted that the Ukrainian government was preparing a quote-unquote kangaroo court for his son and lamented that it could lock him up for over a decade for his political speech. Okay, so, um... I don't know how the court system uh, in Ukraine work. I don't know how that shit works over there in Ukraine... I mean, I, I can only think of the court system uh, in, the, in the American way there. But I'm going to imagine Coach Red Pill is going to have a lawyer there. And that lawyer is going to fight tooth and nail to protect him. And they're going to show off all of this evidence that Coach Red Pill was indeed spreading Russian propaganda. And was calling for the complete and total destruction of Ukraine. There, I'm sure they're going to show off shit like that. I'm sure they're going to be showing off a couple of uh, clips from streams and YouTube videos that Coach has done. And plethora of tweets and other shit there. So I'm sure they're going to be showing off that. Uh, I don't think it's going to be the uh, you know little quote unquote kangaroo court. As uh, Papa Gonzalo likes to say here, but uh, yeah, I think it's going to be far from that anyway. Continuing, Lyra is an American and Chilean citizen who has been living in Kharkov, Ukraine for several years. Okay, you see here, he's been living in Ukraine for seven years. So for all intents and purposes, he's a citizen of Ukraine. He first immigrated as a novelist, then attempted a career as a filmmaker before marketing himself as a dating coach known as Coach Red Pill. And, uh... Anyone remember the Coach Red Pill days? Anyone remember that shit? I sure it should do. I remember the Coach Red Pill days. Ah, oh, what a fucking time that was. Anyway. <sighs> Following Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, Lyra's, Lyra earned internet notoriety while he was already notorious on the internet. But anyway, Lyra earned internet notoriety as a war blogger. 
His analysis of the Russian military operation and harsh criticism of the Ukrainian government from within Ukrainian territory instantly transformed him into a top target of Kiev's often rabid band of online supporters. On May 1st, Ukrainian state security agents arrested Lira for the second time in just over a year. The first time he was jailed, Lira emerged after several days announcing his freedom to the public through new social media accounts. This time, however, Ukrainian authorities charged him with the alleged crime of justifying, quote, Russia's armed aggression and disseminating fakes about the war in Ukraine. If convicted, which let's be real here, he, he definitely will be at this rate. If convicted of these crimes, he faces 13 years in prison. Lira's arrest was announced alongside the detention of 10 other so-called internet agitators living in Ukraine. I definitely gotta... I definitely gotta do a little uh, double check on these uh, interesting people here. Just, just to see if they're... Just as worse, if not more worse, than uh, Coach Red Pill here. Anyway, continuing. The blogger also denied the facts of Russian missile strikes on Ukrainian cities and mass murders of civilians by Russists. That's a uh, Russian fascists there, that's a little abbreviation. The SBU said in an official statement, like we ref likely referring to the to disputed narratives around the massacre of Bulka in March of 2022, and missile strikes on the Kramatorsk train station in April of that year. Lira challenged the Ukrainian government's version of events in both instances. I'm curious, is this the same video that I have on my channel? He is, yes, yeah, for all intents is. and purposes, what you call an ethnic nationalist. But he's not an imperialist, the Kiev regime. I'm, I'm telling you right now. Uh, it, these people are neo-fascist, neo-Nazis. The West is the one puppeteering Zelensky, right? The Kiev regime also constantly shelling the regions of the Donbass. 16,000 people died after 2015, up until the start of this conflict. You know, a thousand children or 800 children were killed. There'd be, uh, but there'd be more to that, but, hmm, okay. Anyway, following the arrest, the Ukrainian SBU published footage of the raid on Lyra's house and clips from his YouTube videos discussing the war. While both Chile and the United States have freedom of expression enshrined in their constitutions, neither government has issued a statement on the arrest of Lyra. Well, that's because he's no longer a citizen of Chile and the United States, so what's the fucking point? That's the Ukrainians' problem to be dealing with there now. Okay. According to Gonzalo Lira Sr., the U.S. Embassy in Kiev held a video conference with his captive son on around May 23rd. He initiated contact with the embassy to ask them to work towards his son's release but was told that only his son had been provided a defense attorney by Ukrainian authorities, okay? So they're going to provide him a defense attorney, okay? Then that's that's nice of them. Maybe maybe they do have a court system similar to how it is in America. I'm not I'm not really sure. Anyway, when Lyra Jr. protested the attorney appointed to him, he was offered a list of other lawyers to choose from according to the embassy. Presumably, they were all public defenders. Meanwhile, the State Department has refused to publicly discuss the U.S. citizens' arrest by a government whose employees are subsidized by U.S. taxpayers. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller refused to answer a question by reporter Liam Cosgrove on whether the U.S. was working for Lira's release. I'm sure Joe Biden and company are going to be working very, very hard 
to save Gonzalo Lira from his latest fuck up. There, I mean, they did such a great job rescuing him the first time, right? Right. There. Hell, maybe they actually did, you know, save Coach Red Pill the first time around. And then Coach Red Pill came back to fucking Ukraine, made an ass of himself again and broke the law yet again. And then the U.S. just threw their hands up in the air and was like, well, fuck it, we tried. He wants to be an idiot, he could suffer the consequences there. I mean, that's what I would do. Excuse me. Gonzalo Lira Sr. speaks out. Lira Sr. told the grade zone that he and his son have not spoken to one another in 24 years. But his son's arrest triggered his parental instincts, prompting him to appeal to both the U.S. Embassy in Kiev and media outlets to pressure the Zelensky government for his son's release. I'm kind of curious now if, you know, Papa Coach, if, uh, you know, Lyra Sr. hasn't spoken to uh, his son, his darling baby boy, in over 24 years, I, I wonder how the hell he came across this fact that, um, yeah, that his son got arrested recently. I, I wonder how he came across that. I wonder how he found out about that. I don't know. Really interesting, isn't it? An affable 80-year-old retiree, Lyra Sr. says he does not share the political views his son has espoused. Though he is critical of the government in Kiev, asked about mainstream reports celebrating his son's arrest in Ukraine and painting him as anti-Semitic and misogynistic. Well, if you've seen his old... Coach Red Pill videos there. Woo! Yeah, yeah, the argument could be made that old, old Coachy Boy was uh, indeed a misogynist. There as for the anti-Semite shit. <sighs> Never really saw it there. Maybe, maybe I missed it. Maybe I missed it in a couple of his uh, recent videos there. Maybe I missed the part where he pulled on the little yarmulke and did the happy merchant dance. I don't know. Anyway, allegations which have nothing to do with his legal persecution. Well, you are dealing with uh, terminally online Twitter users, so, yeah. Lyris Sr. said that his son, <laughs> quote, has a very high IQ as detected when he was 10 years old. He enjoys putting people on the spot, playing with them a bit sadistic. So, Coach Red Pill was always a cunt. Even at 10 years old, he was a cunt. Oof. Fucking oof. Despite it becoming estranged from his son following his mother following his divorce from his mother, Lyra shared warm memories of their time together in New York City. He recalled how they spent hours during the winter building model cars, playing planes and tanks. In the summer, we would enjoy the pool, he said, adding Gonzalo is an excellent swimmer. Okay? Lyra Sr. told the Gray Zone that he's that he worried his son was being tortured and could not sleep normally. Oh my god, maybe they made him shower and clean his room. Oh, the horror. I can only say that this episode has marked my life because it is living a slow death of a son, he said. He doubts his son will ever be released. At present, they are preparing a kangaroo court. Zelensky and his thugs do not fight for democracy and freedom. They fight to keep themselves in power with the blessings of Biden. And, well, you know, they're also trying to fight to keep their people, keep their history alive. 
you know, they're trying to stop an ongoing invasion from their neighbors to the east there. You know, th there's that too. Okay, so, uh... So here we have... Here we have... A picture of, uh... Gonzalo Lyris Sr. Let's zoom in. This is Papa Coach. This is Gonzalo Lyris Sr. And I have no idea who this chick is on, on the left there. Maybe maybe it's just some hot and wild granny looking for a good time. I don't know. The possibilities are endless. But anyway, this is Papa this is Papa Gonzalo Lyris Sr. This is Coach Red Pill's daddy. Uh, this is the man that's having to live through hell right now because his son's an absolute fucking idiot. Anyway. Lyris Sr. said of his son, he feels that the Ukrainian citizens are not being told the truth as to the results of the war. Well, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure they're getting a, a first-hand experience of uh, what the war is really like there. Anyway. While Ukraine is being destroyed, Gonzalo cannot be accused of being a Russian propagandist or, nor agent. He simply has openly expressed to his near 300,000 followers his impressions of the war. He has never contacted a Russian soldier nor a Russian agent. That's going to be a huge X to doubt. As an American citizen living in the country that his two children live, he has expressed his right of speech. Even before his son's arrest on May 1st, Lyra says Gonzalo was already a prisoner at it in his home. Gonzalo was literally kidnapped by the SBU, he said, of the first arrest in April 2022. And after one week of cruel interrogations, he was released under house arrest. You know, uh, if you're going to be a prisoner of your own home there, at least, at least maybe have the common decency to clean up your fucking toilet there, Gonzo. Lyra Sr. told the Grey Zone that Ukrainian, that Ukraine authorities did not have any documents actually charging his son with the crime at the time. Well, in the little video of them raiding Gonzalo's apartment there, you can see, um, you can see some books and especially his laptop. I'm sure they wasted no time combing through uh, his laptop and his electronics there. The SBU destroyed all his communication equipment and they held his passport, he added. Ukraine has enacted laws criminalizing dissent and allowing President Volodymyr Zelensky to ban opposition political parties well, that's because most of the opposition political parties are pretty much loyal to Russia. And to a lesser extent, still loyal to the last president that they had a revolution against. And uh, yes, that guy that they revolted against was, uh, was a pro-Putin fanboy. Uh, nationalize the media. This is in total contradiction what the United States and we citizens of the free world believe and promote. Well, just because you promote something and just because you of the free world believe in something, that doesn't mean that everyone's going to always follow along to it. I mean, just look at fucking North Korea there. Just look at fucking North Korea. Do you think they give a flying fuck what the free world has to say? What the free world believes in? No, they do not. No, they do not. And again, you know, you got shit like this going on. This is shit that was happening when fucking Abraham Lincoln was having to deal with the Civil War, okay? This is shit that was going on during World War I and World War II in America. Okay, this really isn't nothing new. 
People have been doing this type of shit in times of war before, they're doing it now, and they're going to keep doing it in the near future, okay? Is it fucked up? Yeah. But these people are literally fighting a war for survival, so... You know, sometimes you have to be a fucking dick. In order to continue the survival of your own people there. That's what being a leader is all about. Making the tough choices for the betterment of your own people. Anyway, where was I? Uh, da, 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 da. Ah. For the U.S. government, it would only take a phone call to, to Zelensky to free Gonzalo. You know, like that's ever going to happen. Insisted Lira Sr. The world knows that Zelensky is a U.S. puppet. But he does not respect the right of an American citizen to exercise his free speech, even though Gonzalo Lero has been literally living in the country of Ukraine for the past seven years and no doubt no longer considers himself an actual citizen of the United States of America. No doubt he revoked his U.S. citizenship upon moving to Ukraine there. So that's Ukraine's problem now, not the U.S.'s anyway. Lyra concluded our exchange with a blunt statement. Free my son from political imprisonment. Hashtag free speech. Hashtag Gonzalo Lira. Hashtag Kiev. Hashtag State Department. Hashtag Ukraine. Hashtag Ukrainian SBU. Hashtag US State Department. Yeah, I, I gotta say about the gray zone. There, at least they don't hide their shit from behind a paywall. There, I'll give them that. Compared to shit like the New York Times, CNN there, or Fox, or even your local newspaper website, at least they don't hide their shit behind a paywall. I will give them that. There, but, uh, yeah. That was uh, Coach Red Pill's daddy giving his hot takes on his son being a fucking idiot. Uh, I really do not expect things to go Papa, Papa Coach Red Pill's way. But uh, who knows? Maybe we'll get one more. Maybe we'll get one more interview out of Gonzalo Lira Senior right before he dies. Who knows? But anyway, uh, yeah. I really wanted to read this article, and now that it's done, have a good rest of your day.